Today we'll be taking a look at Marincis, what they do, what makes them good, how to bowl them, how to play them, and most importantly, if they're worth spending your hard-earned gems. So let's get into it. So for those of you who may not know, Marincis is a series of water cybers monsters, which like every other cybers deck, specializes in link summoning. It differs from its cousin Salomon Great and Mathmech in that each one of its main deck monsters facilitates some kind of one card combo, with the exception of CB Maiden of course, which either ends on an Aqua Argonaut if you drew Blue Tang or Seahorse, or Great Bubble Reef if you drew any of your other Marinces monsters. This means that you are able to maximize on your non-engine tools, meaning that this deck is able to combat the meta no matter where it's at. A sort of a shortcoming of this deck though is that because it's able to play so many non-engine tools, and because it's functioned through its one card combos, it sacrifices power for consistency. Now this isn't a problem because again you're using abundance of non-engine tools which means that you're able to simplify game states where this deck thrives. But it is something to consider that you don't exactly have an auto win the same way that most other decks do. Because of this, this deck can be considered quite skill intensive. I don't mean that in terms of you have to memorize your combo lines, but I mean it sort of rewards players who spend more time in the lab than they do playing. It means that players who are able to learn the meta, study what they do, where the shortcomings are, and able to play your non-engine tools effectively at those points is where this deck thrives. Because of this, I feel as though this deck kind of sits itself in a sort of cool position where you're able, where games you win, you know you won because you're the better player and not because you happen to draw your one card starter and your opponent did not draw the out. So with all that aside, let's take a look at how you should be building the deck. So we're playing 3 Marincis Seahorse. What this does is that it allows you to special summon this card from your hand to a zone a link Marincis Link Monster points to. And then its second effect is you can banish this card from the graveyard to special summon a Marincis Monster from your hand to a zone a Marincis Link points to. Both of these effects are hard once per turn and you can only use one of those effects per turn. Then we have Marincis Blue Tang which is your main combo starter of the deck. It has two effects, you can use both of these effects once per turn but it's again as a hard once per turn. Now its first effect is when it's summoned you can send a Marincis Monster from your deck to the graveyard and then when it's linked away you can reveal three cards from the top of your deck and add a Marincis card revealed to your hand. Next we're playing three Pascalus. This is sort of your main, it's sort of what helps you push the ceiling of the deck higher. It's been considered one of your other combo pieces. And what it does, it has two effects. The first effect is when you normal summon this card or special summon it, you can special summon one Marincis monster from your hand in defense position. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish from the graveyard to add, I think, a Marincis spell trap from your grave to your hand. We're then playing a three Marincis Springle. This is your main extender, which has two effects. Both of them can be used during the same turn. Special summon this card from your hand by banishing a Marincis monster. If this card is linked away, you inflict 200 points of damage. You can send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard equal to the number of Marincis monsters you control and then inflict 200 points of damage to your opponent for each Marincis card sent. This effect isn't too important in Master In the TCG, you'd be using it to win in time. But the main thing, the reason why we like this effect is because it allows us to chain block effectively. Next, we're playing Sleepy Maiden. This is another one of your extenders, which allows you to special summon this card from your hand while you have a Marincis card on the field. And then you can banish this card from the graveyard to equip a Marincis Link monster to a Marincis Link monster you control. The shortcoming to playing this card is that it's a level 5, so unfortunately we can't normal summon it, so it serves purely as an extender. We're then playing 2 Marincis Mandarin. It's another one of your extenders. It has sort of only one effect in this case, and its effect is if you control two or more Marincis monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand or graveyard to a zone of Marincis Link monster points to. This card is then banished once it leaves the field. Another card of Marincis we're playing that most people do not. We're playing one Balalisi Lamima. I cannot pronounce his name for the hell of me, so you're gonna have to for forgive me for that one. The main reason we're playing this is that the first line of text that this card has is that if a monster you control will be destroyed, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. This is not incredibly important, which is the only reason why we're playing a one. But the reason why this effect does come up is against scenarios where you're playing against snake eyes. It sort of helps you defend yourself against the grave effect of the fire princess. In terms of non-engine, we're playing a one draw and awkward. It's mainly uh, as a cross out target. You can play more of this if you need to. Currently, I find it so it can be a bit cluggy. So I'm playing just the one. Playing three maxi. Unfortunately, you have to play three of these. It's so standard in Master Duel, you either win or lose by this card. Then playing three Ash Blossom. It feels a bit risky playing three Ash Blossom in the current format because Snake Eyes can take so, so much advantage of this. They can just, you know, you make their heater, special summon this from your grave to this other field, and then they get a free combo piece. But I mean, that deck ceiling is so high that it doesn't really matter. And I feel as though the risks, sorry, the, mer the merits outweigh the risk in this case. 
But if you are feeling a bit scared about running this, you can cut this to one and then play the three Droll and Lockwood instead. But then playing one Nibiru for the same reason as Droll is you mainly uh, for a cross out target. This deck has no defense against Nibiru, so you are reliant on playing your cross out designated to sort of stop it. Playing two triple tactics talents, not so much for the draw effect, but mainly to look into your opponent's hand after they activate a monster effect and sort of get rid of another piece of hand trap or whatever the main combo piece in the hand may be. The third effect, which I, oh, sorry, I think is the second effect, which is you can take control of your opponent's monster, also comes up, and we use this with our area to sort of link away the big monsters that our opponent plays. I forgot to go into the Marincis spell and trap, so I'm just going to quickly do that quickly. And we have, we're playing two Marincis die. What the spell card does is it has two effects. The first effect is that you can special summon a non link Marincis monster from your graveyard. The second effect is if you control the field spell, you can special summon a Marincis monster from your deck instead. You can only use one of these effects per turn, and both of them are hard ones per turn. Speaking of which, the card that makes this deck sort of tick, Marincis Battle Ocean, which is a field spell which gives all your Marincis monsters 200 attack plus 600 attack for each card equipped to them. When a Marincis monster is link summoned, you can equip cards from your graveyard, or Marincis link cards from your graveyard up to, I think, three. Three Marincis link monsters from your graveyard to a Marincis monster that you link summon to the extra monster zone. If you use Marincis Crystal Heart to synchro summon your monster, to link summon your monster, that monster is also unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Moving, uh, we're also playing two Marincis Wave. This is sort of one of your best interruptions, and it has two effects, well, three effects that follow in sequence. The main thing is that you can only activate this card while you have a Marincis Link monster, and then depending on the link rating of the monster, it gains more effects. So then, if you control a Marincis Link 2 or higher, when you activate this card, all face of monsters that you currently control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects for the turn. The third effect is if you control a Link 3 or higher, you can activate this card from your hand. Very good, none of these effects are once hard ones per turn. Moving back to the 9 engine real quick, we're playing 2 Hole by the Grave, we want to get rid of hand traps. Playing 3 evenly matched, I feel as though this is kind of good. I feel as though it has more merit than playing sort of 3 Nibiru, as though it has some way to, when you go in second against Snake Eye, it helps simplify their boards there. But also we're still seeing a lot of Labyrinth players in Master Rank, so we're able to play this, simplify their boards there to an extent. I know Labyrinth can do so much with just one card. But again, the point, the key word here is simplify. We are trying to make things as easy for ourselves as possible. We're then playing three Imperm. Again, the standard in, in the hand trap negate. Whatever you want to call it, you can cut this for Vela if you want to. I kind of feel as though we like it because over Vela because we can play it as a six card. Meaning that if you draw it as your six card, it still has some use as opposed to Vela, which has to be in one of your opening five. Moving on to the extra deck, we're playing one Stealth Kraken. This is the only rank, rank four you're playing. It has a few effects. The first is that all face up monsters on the field become water. Then, as a quick effect during the main phase, you can destroy a water monster on your opponent's side of the field and inflict damage to your opponent equal to half its attack. What's important to note about this effect is that it does not target. Yeah, the second portion I think I just skipped ahead and mentioned, but it inflicts damage to your opponent equal to half the monster's attack. This is important because this deck kind of struggles to put up damage or lethal, so you want a way to sort of get rid of bigger monsters that you wouldn't be able to handle. So. In most scenarios, you'll be using this to sort of get rid of a big token, inflict a big Nibiru token that you make, inflict damage to your opponent, and then go for an OTK from there because you'll be able to. The What makes it good as well is that the fact that because all monsters become water, you're able to limit some decks. So we don't really have Salamagre at full power right now in Master but this will be quite effective against them because it means that they won't be able to link summon because a lot of these monsters require you to link up fire monsters. The other good part about this monster's effect is that if we look at Snake Eyes, especially the Promethean Princess, it reads that you can only special summon this card's effect from the graveyard to destroy cards by say, when you have a fire monster. So this sort of stops that in a way. Um, you can cut this if you like. I like running it because I think it works pretty well. The only thing that I could probably that I'm on the fence of is I might cut this for a second Zelandus, but we'll get into that later. We're then playing two Marincis Blue Slug. This is one if you link one monsters, you can only summon one of them per turn. When this card is linked summoned, you can target a Marincis monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. It also water locks you, which is important for our Zelantis that we'll get into a bit later. Then we're playing Sea Angel, which is your other link one, which can be links, which can be summoned once per turn, and when it's summoned, you can add a Marincis spell card from your deck to your hand. We're then playing two Coral Anemone. This is your Link 2 that you'll most likely be going into. It has two effects. The first effect is you can target a water monster in your graveyard, one five or less attack, and special summon it to a zone this card points to. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a water monster, or I think no, sorry, you can add a Marincis card from your graveyard to your hand. The other Marincis link we're playing is Crystal Heart. 
who listed the card as I mentioned with the field spell to make sure Monsters aren't affected by your opponent's card effects. We don't go into this too often, but it sort of helps us in situations where we get drawled because we won't be able to then search, get our second search off. So I like playing this for the versatility's sake. In the TCG, I would cut this and the Kraken for a Totally Awesome and a Bahamut Shark. Splash Mage is the card that makes all of your one card combos possible. So you can special summon by using two Cybers monsters. You can special summon Cybers monsters from your graveyard by using its effect, and then you are Cybers locked. So unfortunately, this does block your Zelatus lines. Area, I've sort of touched on earlier, doesn't have too much use in this deck outside of Triple Tactics Talent to sort of allow you to use your opponent's monsters to link away. Sometimes you can also use this to sort of get rid of an Ibiru token and just sort of help you get into some of your other generic water monsters. So like your Marbled Rock, it only needs two plus water monsters, so this counts as the most big portion of it by using your opponent's rock. Speaking of which, we're playing one Marble Rock, which has two effects. The main effect that we care about is that you can be add a Marincis card from your graveyard to your hand. I think the second effect is you can discard a card when your opponent declares an attack to negate that attack. We're playing one Coral Triangle. This is one of your big mamas in the deck. Can't, this deck can't exactly live without this card. What it does is it's got two effects. First effect is you can discard a Marincis card from your hand to the graveyard to add a Marincis trap from your deck. This is how we search the wave, which is our other way of making our monsters unkillable. But the most broken aspect of this card, of this card is the effect that if it's in the graveyard and we control no monsters, we banish from the graveyard and special summon link monsters from my graveyard whose total rating equals 3. It's a soul charge. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Great Bulb Reef is one of the boss monsters that we end on. It has got a few effects. The first effect is during the standby phase you can banish a water monster from the graveyard, draw one card. Whenever a card is banished you gain 600, life, uh, 600 attack. This effect is sort of mandatory and will proc every time a card is banished so it's important to note that. And then the Third effect is that you can discard a water monster from your hand to the graveyard, special summon one of your banished Marincis monsters. We're then playing Aqua Argonaut, which is your best boss monster to end on. It has multiple effects. The first effect is while it's in the extra monster zone, your opponent can only attack this card. Second effect is during your opponent's turn, you can use it as a spell trap negate by unequipping one of its Marincis Link monsters equipped to it and special summon it to a zone on your side of the field. The third effect is that you can return a water monster on your side of the field to your hand to target one card your opponent controls and return that monster to the hand. Playing Zelantlas, which is the most broken card in this deck, it feels like an absolute cheat code. Mainly because a little bit of ruins knowledge. So if you are under a water restriction, right, Zelantlas effect sort of works by banishing all monsters on the field and then special summon as many of them back to the field as possible. If you're underneath a water restriction, this means that you'll only be able to special summon water monsters back to the field, meaning that your opponent's board is most of the time gonna be board wiped. It's crazy broken. All that aside, I think I've been talking for quite a bit. Let's jump into the combos. All right, let's start off with your bread and butter combo. And for this, you just need a seahorse in your hand. So let's ignore the other four cards in hand and just pretend that we have the seahorse in hand. So we're gonna normal summon the seahorse and then we're gonna go from it into a blue sock. We will then use Blue Slug's effect to add the Seahorse back to hand. Here we go, Seahorse come back. We will special summon Seahorse to the zone it points to. We will then go into a Sea Angel. Making sure that we activate the Sea Angel's effect to search for the Feel Spell. Activate the Feel Spell. From here, we will go into a Splash Mage. We're going to use a Splash Mage's effect to special summon back the Seahorse. From here, we will go into a Coral Anemone. When the Anemone is summoned, we can use the Field Spell to equip two of our Marincis from Grave to it. This is just in case we get interrupted and we have at least a bigger monster on our side of the field. Activate the effect again. This time we're going for the Splash Mage. Special summon it to our side of the field. And from here we're going into an Aqua Argonaut. Making sure we activate Carl and Emily's effect in Grave. We can change this in any way that we feel. In this situation, because I kind of feel as though I want to have the negate with Aqua Argonaut, I would activate the field spell as chain link one, and then Carl and Anemone as chain link two. So this gets our follow up for next turn. 
And then the field spell makes Aqua Argonaut huge and also allows us to have the negate via its effect. So the board doesn't really amount to much, right? It's one of those mid ceiling decks, as I think I've mentioned before. One of the things is now we haven't exactly lost anything from my hand, but this is what the card move does. It gets us a big monster on our side of the field, which our opponent can only attack. It allows us to negate a spell trap by moving one of these forward, which again allows us to get more fallout for next turn. And then if our opponent manages to clear our board, usually the call on memory goes to grave, which allows us to get further fallout. In this case, we don't really have anything to add back. I think if I did resolve the effect of call on memory, I would return either the blue slug or the sea angel. In most cases, I would go for this blue slug. That's your basic combo. Let's take a look at another. For this combo, I'm going to show you how to go about things when you have a blue tang and not just the seals. So we're going to ignore the seals in our hand. And this time we're going to just say we drew the blue tang. So we'll normal summon the blue tang. We will activate its effect to send the seals to grave. We'll then link into our blue slug. Activating blue slug's effect as chain link one to add the seahorse and then blue tang's effect as chain link two just to chain block. In this case, we re revealed nothing. So it just served to chain block. Special summon the seahorse to the zone the blue slug points to. We will then make the Sea Angel. And search for the field spell. And from this position, I'm sure you guys can tell that it's the same thing we did previously. We're going to go into a Splash Mage again. Using the Splash Mage's effect to special summon back either or. From our graveyard in defense position, we will then go into a Coral Anemone using the two of them. Here is Anemone. Yeah, we will use the field spell to make our Anemone big. Equip in two. And then using Anemone's effect to grab our Splash Mage. Then we go straight back into Aquagonaut. Making sure we use the effects in the same sequence as before. I would add blue tank. Gives you more options. And you'd also already have the Sea Austin Grave for your place next to it. There you go. There's your other true one card combo. So I've shown you how to go about your one card combo when you have a seahorse or a blue tang, but what about when you don't? So we're just gonna forget that this is in our hand and we'll just say we only have a Springle in hand. So we will start by normal summoning the Springle. We will then go into the Sea Angel. This time we will use the Sea Angel's effect to search for, well, let's wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna activate uh, Sea Angel's effect as chain link one, and then we will use Springle's effect as chain link two to chain block so that we should be able to get a search off a little bit more effectively or easier. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what we send at the top, we just want to chain block and we add the dive to our hand. We then activate the dive. We're going to special summon back the Springle. From this position, you will go into a Splash Mage. If I can actually click the things, summon out the Splash Mage. Activate its effect. We will special summon back the Springle. We will then go into our Coral Anemone. There's no need to go into Blue Slug. We'll rather keep it in our extra deck for Fallout. Then activate Coral Anemone's effect. Search for the Splash Mage. And from here, we will be going into a Great Bubble Reef, which is essentially a Heat Soul. In no ways is this an oppressive board, oppressive board, but you need to remember when you're going about this combo, you have at least four other cards in your hand. 
In this case, okay, we're gonna ignore this yours, but we've got three going second tools that will allow us to sort of get to our next turn. Let's not forget that we're gonna draw another card during the stamper phase of Grave Old Root. So normally this is fine, it's not the ideal situation, but it does showcase how the deck is able to turn almost any card into a one card combo. Let's look at some more. So I've shown you the one card combos, now let's take a look at some two card combos. In this case you don't need any specific cards, just a way to get two Marinthus onto the field throughout the course of your turn. So we'll then activate Blue Tanks effect. In this case, because we have the Seahorse in Grave, I will go for the Mandarin. We'll then go into Blue Slug. Activate its effect as Chain Link 1 and Blue Tang as Chain Link 2. We want to keep that Mandarin in Grave. Let's see if we find anything. We'll just pretend that we didn't for the combo sake. In this situation, I would probably add the field spell so I can secure it. But again, it doesn't really matter because we're just showcasing a two card combo. So I'm just going to add this to hand. And we have that for follow up for next turn. We'll then special summon the other Marincess we had in hand. In this case, it was the Seahorse. We'll go about our line to make a Coral. Not Coral enemy. What am I talking about? The Angel. <laughs> to make a Sea Angel. And then we go for the call and memory. But first, we need to activate the effect to search the field spell. Activate the field spell. We're going to activate the effect of Mandarin from Grave. We shall summon it to our side of the field of zone. To the zone a Link Monster points to. We will then go into call and memory. We'll use... No, let's use the field spell. We'll only add one so we don't block ourselves. We'll then activate Carl and Nemony's effect. Oh, we had another Marincess in Grave, never mind. But yeah, <laughs> just make sure you check how many Marincess you have in Grave to start your combo. From here, we will go into a Carl Triangle. We will add a Marincess from Grave to hand. In this case, it'll just be added so it'd be for discard fodder for our girl Carl Triangle. So we'll add the seals back to hand. We'll use the field spell to chain block. One. Two. Three. Make sure you activate card triangle effect. Or we'll discard the card we added. Add the field spell to our hand. Not the field spell, the trap card. And then we'll end on a Call an enemy. Unfortunately, we are going to banish our Mandarin throughout the course of this combo. Active an intellect, field spell effect, equip three. I would keep the triangle in the graveyard in case they have evenly matched or something like that. So, how did this change our board? So, we still have the Aqua Argonaut, which is a battle protection in a sense, a spell trap negate. And then during your turn against follow up, you can use its effect to return a water monster you control to the hand, or to a Marincess monster from your field to your hand, and then return a monster on your opponent's side of the field to hand. But we also have a wave, which acts as an imperm and also protects our monsters from everything. It makes all our monsters unkillable, so it may seem like a small adjustment, but it actually does quite a lot. Let's take a look at this some other way. So here's another way we can go about that two card combo. In this case we have a Pascalus and a Springle. So we'll start off by normal summoning the Pascalus, activate its effect to special summon the Springle to our side of the field. We will then make a blue slug using the Springle to our side of the field. Again we will activate blue slug chain link 1 and then we will use the Springle as chain link 2 to block. Oh, we took some damage in the process, nice. It's always a nice benefit. Going to Sea Angel. Using its effect to search for the field spell. In this case, we were lucky we had Call by the Grave, so if they had something to disrupt us, we could have normally been able to stop it. We'll then go for a Coral Anemone.
We'll use the field spell to make it big. Add another card, yes. I heard it's a fact. Who do we want to keep in grave? Push someone out, the Pascalus. We will both go for the Coral Triangle. In this case, I decided to keep. Well, I mean, we, we mulled the sprinkle in the graveyard, so we did it right. Pretending like we didn't mull anything. This is how you go about it. For this situation, we would activate Carl and Emily again, chain link one, to add for the Scott Potter. And then we will use the Battle Ocean to chain block. Same thing we did before, we can activate this effect. Send the passive list to graveyard. Add the wave to hand. Use the sprinkle. Then banish the Pascalus. Put also summon herself to the field. And then go into a Carl Anemone. No, not a Carl Anemone, what am I talking about? Aqua Argonaut. <laughs> I'm confusing these names today. Confusing them so bad. There's the big goal. Something I forgot to mention about this combo, which is very important, is that while the, we have the addition of the wave, we also have the addition of having the Coral Triangle in the graveyard. And what this does is during our turn, when we come back to our turn, depending on what our board state is, if we control no cards, banish us from the graveyard, special summon water more links, I think it's water links, or, yeah, from a graveyard whose combined rating equals three. So this allows us to usually go for a Coral Anemone plus a Sea Angel. From this position, you would use the Coral Anemone's effect, special summon another Marinsis from Grave to your side of the field. You'd link into Blue Slug to add something from your graveyard to your hand. The most important part about doing this link is that we put ourselves underneath a water restriction. So we can then go for our Zealanthus, Zealanus, and Board White. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so this combo shows you how to go about your plays when you only have a dive and another Marincess that isn't Seahorse or Blue Time. So this is how you're going to go about it. You're going to normal summon your Mandarin. You're going to go for Sea Angel. We'll link it off. We are going to then search for the field spell. Let me do this slower so I don't get ahead of myself. But yeah, we're going to search for the field spell. Okay, we're going to activate the field spell. We're then going to activate dive. We're going to select the second option to make sure we special summon a Marincis from our deck. If I can just move this thing. I would go for the blue tang in this situation. And then use blue tang to send our good friend Seahorse to the graveyard. From here, we'll go into a Coral Anemone. We will use... Yeah, let's activate this one. We'll activate Blue Tang as Chain Link 1 and the Field Spell as Chain Link 2. Just to sort of chain block our Blue Tang. And also it makes our, our Coral Nemony a bit bigger in case we get interrupted. Okay, so we were lucky to add a Marincess. From the situation, I guess, let's just go for the Sleepy Maiden in case we want to equip another Equip Spell. We will then activate Carl and Emily's effect. We will special summon either of these. Let's go for Blue Tang again. Let's, and this time we're going for Blue Side to add our good friend Seos to our hand. Okay, we'll activate the effect and then we will add the Seahorse to hand. From here, we will go into Coral Triangle, so we have follow-up for next turn, also so that we can search for our lovely trap. We will activate Coral Nemity Chain Link 1, and then use the Field Spell to block. In this case, we will go for Blue Tank, because we want to have a discard for Coral Anemone. Of course, we're ignoring the cards that we have in hand, but if my hand looked like this in an actual game, I would have probably gone for the dive, because then it gives me a special summon for my deck during next turn. 
which I think gives us a bit more options. But like I said, we're going to show you how to go about this when you only have these cards in hand. So we're going to activate the effect, send the blue tang, search for the trap. And from here, we will go into Aqua Argonaut. So it's the same two card combo. It's just that, you know, we, you just shuffle around your link ones as you go about it. And then of course we'll activate that. No, we will not maxi. And then we will get three of our maidens onto our side of the field. That is the dive plus one combo. So something you may have noticed about this two card combo is that it relies on a double search. One to get the field spell and then two to search for the trap card. So what happens if your opponent activates Drone and Lockbird after you get the field spell? Don't worry, you're not stuck. There's another way you can make an unkillable monster, but you do lose the negate, the additional negate. This is how you go about it. You're gonna almost some blue tank. Again, this is just a two card combo. We just need two Marincis in our hands that, get, that can get themselves to the field. In this case, we had blue tang and Mandarin. We will then link off the blue tang to go for Oh wait, we activated the text. Yeah, so chain link one to add the seahorse back to hand. And then I will choose not to activate the blue tanks effect because remember we're trying to play around roll. Then special summon the seahorse to our side of the field. We'll then go for a coral anemone. Again, yeah, we're playing around roll, so we're not going immediately for the sea angel. It does mean that we do some of the chain blocking, but this is just one of those ways if we suspect our opponent has drawn awkward. In this case, we're going specifically for the blue tank. Push on somebody to our side of the field. We will then go for the C Angel. Using C Angel as chain link one and blue tank as chain link two. So this does two things. It allows our C Angel to resolve while being chain blocked. And it allows us to get at least two searches off, or a maximum of two searches, depending on what we reveal. In this case, we've got nothing in case our opponent has drawn. So we will add the Battle Ocean. From this position, our opponent would activate their Drawn Lockbird, which would then stop us from getting the Trap Card. So we will activate the Battle Ocean. We'll then Special Summon the Mandarin from my hand. In this case, we're going to go for Crystal Heart which when linked off to special summon emergence is linked to the extra monster zone while we have battle ocean on the field makes it unaffected by all cards our opponent activates all cards our opponent, all of our opponent's cards and then from here we will go into an aqua argonaut so it's a different two card combo it's one of the ways we can play around roll it doesn't feel as good as the trap card. I know in terms of card economy, we essentially achieved the same thing because while well, the negate would stop one of our opponent's monsters, and in this case, we ripped a card out of their hand, which was Droll. So in terms of card economy, it's essentially the same, but I feel as though disruptions are just so good if you know where to time them. But what we do have is we were able to make something in a pinch, and it's pretty good in my opinion. Let's take a look at another combo. Let's try an unusual three card combo that you may not always go into, but it is, uh, you know, an interesting way to flex on people or just to try something a little bit different. Pulls out of my normal summoning Pasculus. Special summon the blue tang. Activate blue tang's effect to send the seahorse to graveyard. Or then a link into blue slug. Man, these names are so confusing. And they're like the simplest things, but nah, you can never get them done. Same ordering. As before. Yeah, sorry, I got a bit distracted out the window over here. Let's, let's just play this handout properly. Let's just play this handout if we had... If everything went down the way it did. That's what we're gonna do. See, then we're gonna then go into our... God damn, which was this one? Sea Angel. And then use the Sea Angel's effect to search for the field spell. Give me the field spell. Give me, give me. Activate the field spell. Then going to make Coral Anemone. The 
equipping too. We'll then activate Colin and his effect. Special summon the level 4. I want the level 4 this time. Because we're going into Kragen. Crag Can I click the things? <laughs> Special summon out the Sleepy Maiden. Special summon out the Gold Core Triangle. Hmm. Yeah, chain link one. To add, see, I forgot the name. The level three. We're in the level three. Hmm. Yeah, we can go ball three. I had to think there for a second. gonna act as the effect is normal we'll just pretend we didn't have this or we're gonna get the second one we got two negates this time we're gonna activate the sprinkle banishing the level three name is gone again out of my head gone forever <laughs> going to aqua argonaut heal spell chaining one Sprinkle chain link too. No, we will not actually own card. Let's go. One. Two. Three. We'll also activate the Sleepy Maiden. Why not? I mean, we're just seeing how this combo goes at this point. <laughs> Very unplanned combo. So what did this very unplanned combo get us? We have a monster pop, a Dryden effect, if you would, through us Kragen. We have a spell trap negate. We have two monster negates. We have an Ash Blossom as an additional negate. That's our five interruptions. And then we also need to remember that Kragen has the added effect of turning all monsters on both sides of the fields to water. Now you may ask what the significance of this is, but um, I'm just gonna point your attention to Fire Princess. Promethean Princess can only activate the Grave Effect if you control a Fire Monster. So we essentially shut that out too. It also works a little differently or a little spicily against decks like Salaman Great, which need Fire Monsters on the field to get into the Link Monsters. So again, very unplanned combo, but uh, it kind of shows what this deck can do at the very top of its ceiling, which in this case was five, five interruptions and a, I guess you could say a soft floodgate. Anyway guys, those are all the combos for me. Let's take a look at the deck again to kind of see and tie things together. So as that last combo kind of showed you, is a lot of times when playing this deck, you need to be able to piece together combos yourself based on what you're able to draw and what you're able to search to sort of push the ceiling of the deck higher and higher. But while it is not practical for me to show you every single way you're able to do that, what this video has showed you is how these one and two card combos sort of work so that you can start stringing together these combos yourself to start playing this deck at the higher levels. The question that I have not answered just yet is if this deck is worth your gem. I'm gonna say yes. I know a lot of you guys are looking at your screen right now and you'll see tons of ultra rays. But if you look closely, a lot of these ultra rays are coming from non-engine tools which are encouraged to invest in in any case because they are tools that you can add to any deck to succeed at the higher levels. The core itself is only playing four ultra rays, being Stealth Kragen, Coral Triangle, Aqua Argonaut, and Zelandas. The Stealth Kragen you're even able to cut if you're on a very pressed budget and I would recommend then replacing it for either a sec- well I guess we won't be going for the Zenantlers because we're just cutting down an Ultra Race, but we can cut it for a third blue slug. So all that aside, I'm giving this deck my stamp of approval. I think it's good, especially as a rogue anti-meta strategy that is able to compete at master rank. It's just one of those decks you're going to have to spend some time with. And when I say spend some time, I mean learning the meta and learning where exactly to combo to sort of to place your non-engine tools to disrupt your opponent's combos. For that being said, I think you guys should pick this up. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next.